Hey everybody, we are in the Woodland Garden today. It's July 2nd and it's actually been very breezy today, which is unusual for July. Um, so we are planting this gorgeous Japanese maple today. I had to run down to Scottsdale to spend my daisy dollars and I was able to get this really beautiful Japanese maple. It's called Red Spider. And it's a very unusual type. It's very rare. Isn't that awesome? I'm really excited to get this in the ground. It is supposed to get uh, 10 feet tall with about the same width. So 10 by 10. Uh, we will see how it does here. It's going to get pretty a pretty good amount of sun in this area. And we're just going to plop it right where we had the, um, the weeping willow is right here. And we ended up finding a new home for that. I think I probably need to dig a little deeper, don't you? Okay. Have fun checking it out, bud. Probably need to dig a little deeper, don't I? Yeah, it's okay. It's probably a Joro spider. Yeah, that's the same one. They're kind of all over the place. Um, I'm going to stop the camera for just a second so I can see how I want this thing uh, laid out in the hole here. Okay, so I think from this angle, the tree actually looks pretty good. So I can cut the burlap off? Yeah, let's go ahead and cut the burlap off. And once we finish mulching it's gonna stand out a little bit better but we're, we're in the process of getting mulched down but here is one of our newest additions isn't this an awesome japanese lantern we've got several around here we still need to move the bench but and we need to it's a little crooked but fix it up right and i think that it'll be, this is nice along the, the path. No, what? Yeah, if you could bring that mosquito spray, that'd be great. I'm getting eaten alive. Oh gosh, it is bad out here. But I'm gonna get, come up here and get close again so you can see some detail on this thing. I don't have uh, a Japanese maple in my garden that, that looks like this. So, whoa, <laughs> I'm excited to get this in the ground. Should I keep the gravel on the bottom of it? I, there's gravel on the bottom? Yeah. I mean, I think you could probably leave it there. Might help with drainage if need be. Do you want me to help you with that, hon? Why don't you set it down on the side instead of... Here. Mosquito spray. Thank you, Jeff. Is this going to be in the video? Yeah. <laughs> How old are you now, Jeff? 11. Say it loud. 11. There we go. That way people can hear you. Jeff's having his nature time out here with us. How is that? No, you're not. No, you're not going inside yet, mister. I'm going in the oh, you're going in the pool. I'm not going to get a baby. He's going to jump in, huh? No, I'm going to take my shirt off. Okay. You, can take your shorts off too if you, want. you know what? What's cool about having your own pool is you're going to just jump in with your clothes. It's pretty awesome. Good the way it is, or you're not skinny dipping, though. Uh, yeah, no thanks. Let's, let's not do that. <laughs> is that good the way it is, or can we turn it around? I think that's good. It just may need to be corrected as far as like being upright. It looks like it's leaning a little bit. All right, I'm gonna put the, the camera down so I can help get this right. All right, so we're getting the soil down. And what is nice about this, it's actually pretty easy to plant because the hole is already there. So we just gotta put down 
this uh, woodland soil mix. And Does that looks great while you look at it. I think so. Let me get back over this way. Yeah, that's better. That's more straight on. Or I could just leave the hose on it with that sprinkler. So the watering bag slowly watered it. Well, I think I got the right amount of soil. It's pretty though. Some little seed pods. I mean, yeah, I think this is like right on just the right amount. One more bag. Oh, there's one more bag. Oh, okay. I want it away from the... Yeah, you want to keep it away from the trunk. At least it's shady out and it's really probably the coolest day we've had to do this it's what mid 80s today we have had some really intense heat like mid to high 90s for like the past two weeks it's been pretty intense a lot of days in the pool all right now we just got to get it watered in Okay, while Scott is setting up our new hose to water in the Japanese maple, I figured I'd just do a little update of how everything is doing back here in the backyard. Look at the grass, isn't it looking great? It looks really awesome here up front. Really, really happy about all that. It hasn't been mowed in a couple of weeks, so it's on the longer side. And there's a few weeds, um, but gosh, if you go look back at my videos from last year, completely different space. It looks so, so much better. Um, over here in our fire pit area, we finally got some nice furniture <laughs> to go around here. Of course, it's been way too hot to actually use it, um, but I have been coming out here and sitting in our new glider chairs, which has been so nice. And what's really nice about this is they swivel so I can turn this around and just look out at the garden. It's really, really nice. I've been enjoying it very much. So here is the rose garden. There's a few things blooming, but we're really kind of in a lull right now with this heat we've been having. This rose is called La Perla. Ooh, and it has a really, really nice fragrance right now. What? It's not gonna make it. It's not gonna make it? Oh, just short, huh? Oh, man. Okay, sorry for that interruption. Uh, back to La Perla. It has a very strong fragrance. Um, I would call it rose with a bit of a fruity, like a fruity scent really really fantastic scent and these blooms are actually very very small because they don't you know like the heat too much um so middle of summer the blooms are usually a little bit smaller than the ones that we get in springtime when they've been dormant all winter 
Here's another La Perla. So there's four La Perlas on this side of the bed. And I decided to take out Eden and put a cucumber in. Uh, I believe this one is, what does it say? Let's, let's see, burpless, that's what it is. And I've got a little um, basil plant here as well. So that way I can get a little bit of produce. Uh, those of you who are new, these beds actually used to be vegetable garden beds and I got tired of vegetables and decided to plant roses because I love roses so much. Um, but the roses on the arbor weren't doing so hot. So I figured, okay, let's bring back in some vegetables. Why not? <laughs> uh, this here is Fragrant Masterpiece. It's about to bloom. It's got little teeny tiny blooms. Um, a lot of the roses are kind of in a dormant phase right now or several of them are not doing very well. As you can see, we did cut back part of the peach tree because it was just completely laying on the ground here and covering all these roses, which is why some of them have died and some of them are not doing so well. And another thing we battle here in the South, the blasted Japanese beetles. This rose here is L, which I would like to smell it, but let's get the beetles out first. I can't tell too much as far as scent goes right now, but this one's barely hanging on. It's not doing too well. Uh, here's Liv Tyler. It's got some, it's pushing some new growth. I do need to come out here and deadhead. Here's a nice one of uh, Roberto Alagna. That's looking good. Yeah, this rose always smells good. Really strong fragrance on that one. Oh, Scott's watering the Japanese maple for me. And lots more roses here in the U-shaped bed. They're all kind of in dormant mode right now. Some of them are not doing so well. It's been really, really, really hot. Uh, La Fontaine All Pearls is doing great though. This one has been a really strong grower for me. Oh, and then here's Courage. Japanese beetle, get out. This one has a pretty good fragrance. Okay, let's see if I can keep it still for a second and you can check it out. Courage um, definitely looks better in the spring flush, but still has nice blooms. I do need to come back in here and cut a lot of these down. They're getting a little too tall and crazy. As you can see, uh, Dreamland has gotten huge. I mean, my goodness. It just keeps pushing out more and more canes. Um, and here we have some smaller roses. This is Bolero. This one's barely hanging on, that's French lace. And I've got Leonardo da Vinci, Windsor Castle Wedding right here. And then these are some Grace Rose Farm roses that I don't have labeled right now. This one I think has a tag though somewhere. Maybe, yeah. Ashley, that's right. That one's doing really well. This one, not so much. And I'm not, I don't remember what that is. Um, but here are all my replacement roses from Grace Rose Farm. And I just ended up getting five Sweet Mademoiselle because those are my favorite. And I know they grow well for me. And so I just decided why not get these? So those are doing really well here, filling in nicely. They were actually just planted like a few days ago or maybe last week. Last weekend it was? Okay. Yeah, they've really put out a lot of new growth since being planted. 
Um, here are some older Sweet Mad Mademoiselle roses. Again, very small because we're in July. We'll get a bigger flush um, probably in about, I don't know, six weeks. Hopefully, if it's not too hot. It depends on how hot August is. Yeah, that smells really good. Oh, I love that rose. I don't know. We'll see. It's been very hot this summer. Oh, I always, I always water in like really long. Well, it's a good thing it reaches at least with the, uh, with the jet on. <laughs> yeah, they probably will. Okay, we'll just wait till I'm done with the garden tour so I don't oh, yeah, get. Kind of yeah, don't spray me out. <laughs> Are you doing a full tour? Yeah, just back in here. Because they haven't seen the uh, Japanese lanterns yet. I've got some more cucumbers on this side. Colette died. I don't know what happened. And this one's doing so-so and then this Colette died it, well excuse me it has like one good cane so that's a bummer um, this peach tree is such a mess it's as soon as it's done growing its peaches we're gonna be cutting it down uh, but here I planted ruby slippers uh, it's called what is hydrangea Cursifola, and they are doing great. Super green and healthy. They're really loving their little spot here. So I'm happy with that. Grass is doing great. Roses back here have definitely been a little bit more finicky than I had hoped for, just in these beds. Some are really doing good and some not so much. Uh, especially this bed. This bed is really suffering. So, I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to try and plant some different roses in here in the fall, maybe, or maybe do something different. I'm not sure. But back here is the woodland garden, which I'm super proud of. We've been working really hard back here. Uh, just got some new Japanese lanterns while we were on vacation. Um, heading back from North Carolina, we found a little roadside place that was selling all this different statuary. And so the prices were good. So I was like, well, I'm going to snatch up some of these. Still need to work on some placement. And obviously that one's a bit crooked, but for the most part. I'm liking where they are. This one is my favorite back here. This one's so pretty. And then I've got a little dragon here, a little protector dragon. I'm not sure what I want to name him yet though. Still de deciding on a name. If you guys want to help me out with dragon names, please do. Leave your, leave your name, dragon name in the comment section. But isn't that a beautiful lantern? I mean, it's just the perfect spot for it, really. I'm very happy with how that turned out. I and mean, honestly, this whole space, now that we've got it all mulched, it just looks so much cleaner. Definitely very peaceful and beautiful back here. And then here's my Celtic cross. A little nod to our Celtic roots right there. Here we've got a beautiful hedge of an incredible hydrangeas. 
And for the amount of shade they get, I'd say they do pretty well back here because this is a really shady spot. And then here are all of my pop star hydrangeas. They're doing really great. The ferns are doing very well. I mean, it is a night and day difference having irrigation back here. They are very, very healthy. Oh, and I don't want to forget Surefire Rose Begonia. Isn't that pretty? I love this annual so much. It's so tough and it just doesn't stop blooming. You can neglect this thing and it will still perform for you. It's awesome. All right, let's go down the woodland path here. Still need to move the bench. That's not... The grass is hanging on. It uh, is not the happiest back here, but it is what it is. Uh, we got a new Japanese lantern right here that I adore. So cute. Got it right next to this uh, Germain's Gyration Japanese maple. And then here's my beautiful crooked pagoda tower. I need to I need to put a little support under it and make it a little bit more level. But I really love it in this spot. I mean, it's just so pretty. With all the different colors and textures of the woodland garden. It's great. And I really do like how this whole little section has turned out. We just finished planting the uh, red spider Japanese maple. And I think it's perfect. It's a really great spot for that. I may need to end up moving this shrub here because that's gonna get as big as the Japanese maple. Uh, so I may have to find a new spot for that. We'll see. We'll see how it all grows up. Um, but for now, I think it looks great. And I'm loving these hostas here lined up all along the path, along with the, uh, these are um, called Invincible Sublime Hydrangeas. I'm really loving these hydrangeas here. In fact, I love them so much, I'm like super tempted to pull out some of these roses and put more in here, honestly. And I, maybe I'll do that. Since like a lot of the, the roses in these beds didn't make it, I might just transplant them. I might do that. We'll see. That's a lot of work though. I don't want to think about it right now. <laughs> oh, always creating more work for myself <laughs> and my husband, which he's not too thrilled about, I'm sure. Um, but everything's growing well here. I just really love the way the hydrangeas look back there. And it would be nice to have more of them, don't you think? I'm a hydrangea freak. I'm a, I'm a rose freak and a hydrangea freak. I love them both. Uh, back here is still a bit of a work in progress. Still working on getting this area weeded and mulched. I'll probably, since it's been so hot, I'll probably tackle this in the fall and get um, some more ferns in here to fill this, fill this area in. Ooh, and that little guy. He looks like he needs some water. Look at that. He is a bit wilted. Now 
over here we've got a row of limelight hydrangeas. They're doing really, really well. And the roses up top there are just growing like crazy again. And of course the problem is they're just covered in Japanese beetles right now. And so it's, you know, the leaves are all eaten up and they just don't look so pretty. So I may just go ahead and sacrifice any small blooms and cut them back further down. Uh, here we've got lots and lots of blueberries. I've been out here almost every day picking blueberries. And in fact, I've gotten so many off of this bush and then we have three bushes in the front yard and I have gotten so many off of them. I'm gonna make a blueberry pie for my dad's birthday, which is this Friday. Okay. Oh, before I walk right by them, here's Pompanella. I had cut her way back and she's rebounding nicely. Got, has, has a lot of new growth. Doing very, very well. And here I planted, I think Athena eleganza, which is growing nicely. Got some pretty Shasta daisies. Shasta daisies mixed in with hydrangeas. This is limelight. They're just starting to bloom. And then we've got the Bliss Parfuma roses all along here looking really good too. Uh, let me show you around the pool area and then I'll show you up front how everything is looking. All right, I'm up here by the pool area and our lime lights are just looking spectacular right now. They're so, so beautiful. Is this for your video? Yeah. Jeff is having fun in the pool. Get in. I know, I'm gonna get in as soon as I'm done showing everybody around, okay? I promise. But I just absolutely love all these limelight hydrangeas by the pool. It just looks so pretty. And we're having our big uh, 4th of July pool party on Thursday, which is going to be exciting, having family and friends over. Everything's, the hydrangeas are really struggling in this heat. <laughs> trying to keep everything happy and watered is not easy right now like see how see how unhappy these are I've had a hose on these constantly and they still just aren't so happy well these look a little bit better yeah I left the hose on this section last night you could see there the leaves are a little bit nicer but yeah everything is drooping but even if even though it's drooping that's pretty amazing isn't it I mean that's gorgeous it's still beautiful and that's big daddy hydrangea but yeah I'm gonna have to bring the hose out here and leave it on this section a little bit longer uh, these are Nantucket blue so a slightly different variety than big daddy right here I have to say Big Daddy is definitely my favorite. I, I cut blooms off those and bring them into the house to enjoy. The clematis is actually still blooming, which I'm kind of shocked to see. And then I've got some flocks blooming here by the pool. A 
The geraniums are looking great. And the surefire white begonias in the pots are doing really, really well. I did water these last night. so pretty. Petunias are still doing going strong over here. Zade is growing like crazy. We uh, had to put these trellises up to keep it under control. <laughs> And these roses are growing. Um, these just stopped blooming out of nowhere and I just, I just fertilized them. I don't know what happened with that. They were looking great just a couple days ago. But uh, this rose is Star of the Republic and it's the same in all three pots. It's the first year they're in these containers. So we haven't had too many blooms, but next year, I bet you we're gonna have a whole bunch. Here in this little corner, we've got a pretty little rose here called Apricot Drift. Jeff is getting impatient. And this is a uh, bubblegum supertunia. And then I have a few Japanese maples in these pots with my, with another new little teeny tiny lantern right there. All right, let's go up front. I'll show you up front real quick. It's not the prettiest. Everything in July is pretty much like a jungle around here, but I know you guys like to see it and how it looks no matter what the time of year is. So let's head that way. All right, I didn't realize my hubby has the sprinklers going, but we definitely need it because my goodness, everything just needs as much water as possible right now. Um, so this is the rose garden area, which is still doing great. You know, a lot of them are first year roses or actually all of these in the center are first year roses. And so they're still pretty small right now. So I'm hoping they make it through this heat, crossing my fingers, saying a prayer. Uh, but the limelights look fantastic. Aren't they gorgeous? I just love these hydrangeas. Can't get tired of them. They're so beautiful. Crimson Queen is taking the heat well. You can see in the leaves, they've gone green, so it is a bit stressed. I probably should stick a hose on that too. The grass hasn't been cut in a couple of weeks uh, just to battle the heat. So, but the grass is supposed to be cut tomorrow, but everything's looking nice and green and beautiful in here. Just not, not a lot blooming right now. And trying to get these little dry spots taken care of. Uh, but I did clean off the front porch. My goodness, this front porch was an absolute disaster. It's a little bit more cleaned up now. I sprayed everything off this morning and watered all of my plants. All the monsteras have been watered and the ferns. We've got everything washed off. We've got a nice wreath up and cleaned off all the furniture. It was a, it was a bit of a mess out here. 
Isn't that a gorgeous Thai constellation? That is one massive leaf. This is a beautiful plant. Thankful to have it gracing my front door here. Back here, we're trying to get some spaces deeply watered. They are really dried out. And I am barefoot right now, so I cannot. Ah! Oh my God! Jeez! Come on! <laughs> I didn't realize that one came on right there. Yeah! <laughs> Sorry. I'm trying to get this all fixed. Okay. Well, I was going to go down that way, but I'm not going to go down that way because yeah, water. Gonna... Well, I don't have shoes on right now, so well, it's fine. I know. I can't walk on the rocks barefoot. I'll die. I can't handle it. What? Here's a closer look at the rose garden bed up front here. Everything just doesn't look very good. <laughs> Because the Japanese beetles just do a number and there's two things that are really really hard to control here in the south that is black spot and Japanese beetles you just kind of have to be okay with uh, the roses having an ugly period during the growing season and um, once you know early fall rolls around and we get another flush of blooms, it's gonna look a lot better. Here's Traviata. We got one good bloom out of the whole rose garden. <laughs> and here's another Japanese beetle infested sweet mademoiselle, get out. This one just smells so good. That's why it's my favorite. The color, the fragrance, and the blooms in the spring are huge. I mean, absolutely monstrous. But man, oh man, this, the grass definitely needs a good cut. Good thing that's happening tomorrow. Everything kind of needs a trim back here in the rose garden too. Everything's getting a little overgrown, but it's been so hot. It's just been really hard to be out here unless you're, you know, in the pool. But everything's looking good over here. I've got the strawberry vanilla hydrangea blooming. That one's just gorgeous. And then the one right here next to it is Phantom Hydrangea. And then we've got Bobo right here and then Limelight Prime. Okay, so Jeff is calling me to get into that pool. So I'm going to go spend some time with him. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, definitely shows a good picture of what a garden looks like in the depress de depressive heat of July. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.